So three, two, one. Shailene Maria Lawrence, very, very warm welcome to the video episode of Lights, Camera, Zadi. Welcome, Mandir. Thank you so much, and uh, I'm really excited because this is my first video cast. So I'm really uh, happy, and I'm really happy to be connected to you uh, through this. So thank you once again. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think many thanks to Shubhaji, our mutual friend, who connected and introduced us. And uh, yeah. great! Finally, we got a time and chance to record. And uh, to everybody, uh, this is welcome to the video form of Lights Camera Zadi. I don't know either this could be an epic success or an epic failure. I have no idea how this will turn out to be. So here we are uh, trying to do recording. Even a lot of listeners who are listening to me from quite some time will find little change. in my tone as well the way i am talking as well because obviously the camera is on uh, and shalin uh, great to have you here i mean you have you are an amazing individual and just by the likes of your portfolio there's so much to know and learn from you and uh, you write so well you know you're constantly writing you're constantly raising issues uh, you know you are out there in the local media regional media trying to raise variety of concerns i think there is so much we can learn from you in fact uh, just so that our listeners would know like shalin covers a wide range of issues and you know just for their glimpse shalin would cover issues from family planning indian healthcare for women body autonomy caste honor killings domestic violence child marriages importance of mental health or politics of female pressure uh and uh, dowry etc and it's the range of topics that you cover wanted to know how do you do that how do you do that when you list it down i'm like oh i do so much okay i would be i'm like doing a lot or i'm like disturbing people a lot by writing and talking so much on various topics people might think i'm like she's like she's jobless she's sitting in on she is sitting and at home on social media and talking about different kind of things You know, I, I don't know. Uh, I am a feminist, basically intersectional feminist, and this, and I love freedom. Who who doesn't like to be free, right? So I love freedom. I like not to be controlled by anyone. So uh, it's a it's all about being equal. You know, it's all about being uh, all good things in life. So I write about what bothers me, what disturbs me, as a you know a normal Indian woman uh, who's. Uh, reaching her 40s and um, we have life struggles we have social struggles we have cultural issues uh, politics affects me every day the government affects me the state government the central government uh, and there are politicians who really uh, anger me and there are a lot of politicians who i do, do have crush upon and uh, i do uh, uh, i love history and uh, i but uh, bharatiya nari right that's what you say as a bharatiya nari you have a lot of issues going around there you constantly have people looking at you you have that male gaze you know you have that male gaze you, you can't shop uh, shop alone you can't eat alone you cannot decide when to get married you can't decide whether to get married or not you can't decide whether to have a child or not you know everything is like your personal someone is sitting there and you know so the so society is asking you questions what are you doing when are you going to do that when are you going to get married why are you fat why are you dark why are you not fair why are your eyes like this why do you have eye bags okay you are in love with this person you broke up with this person who gave you the permission to have you know different relationships and uh, who gave you the permission to fall in love so an indian woman uh, you know goes through so much of uh, uh, to be very frank so much of shit from the time we are you know conceived in our mother's uh, womb to the till the time we were going to die so there's so many issues and it bothers me a lot you know i can just put up with it and i can say oh you know what i'm very proud to be a woman i am strong i am this let me put up with this i can't put up with that i need to question everything i need to question the system because i always compare myself uh, to the women globally i always compare uh, myself to women who are free women who are uh, free to do what is right with their bodies a uh, woman who are free to make decisions for their lives so when i see that uh, i i feel you know even i should have that rights and the constitution of india guarantees me that you know that right as a woman i can do what i want it is there from 1950s in 2020 they are asking me why i am making decisions on my own <laughs> so you know it, it actually baffles me so i am a 
a survivor of domestic violence when i was 21 years old i was married so uh, that was a very uh, violent marriage so i came out of that uh, domestic violence situation that was very horrible because you know what the whole indianness is like you you, you live with your husband wo pati devta hota hai so whatever happens you have to be he will beat you no matter you just be with him <laughs> you know all that kind of shit and uh, uh I, once you break uh, the thing called marriage you get divorced and then people are like oh she got divorced oh no way you know it's not acceptable it is not you can't divorce your husband sanskar 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 culture culture so the whole taboo around divorced women the whole taboo about the divorced single women so almost like 15 years i put up with that and then at one point you want to break free you don't want to quit, answer anyone around you not those aunties not those uncles not that any cultural religious caste sentiments you don't want to answer anything you want to live your life according to you, your rules you know that is the point i realized i have to do something so i quit my job i was like for 15 years i was working and for almost 10 years i was into it i was a marketer a uh, one day i quit my job and i i just don't know what, what is there to take to my grave i have nothing achieved other than you know earning money so i just thought okay i have to be a writer so i'll be a writer so i just resigned my job in one night as yes, i was crazy weird crazy and then i just resigned my job and then i started writing and luck struck me because that is i think 2015 is a time when like everybody were talking about feminism and you know all those things and uh, people really loved what i write and speak so i spoke about uh, you know uh, domestic violence crime against women you know you know all those things i, I wrote against it i started um, becoming an active uh, you know active person on the field working with the women who are you know suffering from uh, domestic violence and violence and stuff like that so i just, just started there then i started writing on cinema so cinema was there art was there bollywood was there tamil movies were there when toxic masculinity was like too much <laughs> and you have all the rajini gods and kapil hearts and, and toxic masculinity and all those item dances of women were objectified and all indian cinema was objectifying fine women and you know, i don't know no no i have to give my opinion on all these i have to give my opinion on cinema i have to give my opinion on politics big boss everything so i just started with it yeah i talk a lot sorry <laughs> well i mean that makes a great podcast so <laughs> yes so shall we i mean what does it mean to be free if i have to ask you uh to be free is to not to get confined by rules of uh caste or uh, patriarchal institutions so there are patriarchal institutions caste is there religion is there uh there are a lot of system which wants to enslave women which wants to always you know keep women in her shackles uh, who does not want women to be you know uh, uh, so i talk about body autonomy uh, talk about uh, choosing to marry outside of the religion or choosing to marry outside of the caste to have a love marriage to be an independent worker to be financially independent to be sexually independent to have a sexuality of your own to find out at any point in you know time that you know i might not be you know uh, to find out i might i may not be a binary gender too you know i can be anything my sexuality can be anything it can be the spectrum and uh, um, uh, i want to be represented in, in in parliament i need to have that the three person reservation uh, you know in the parliament i need to have my opinions out that is what is called freedom uh, some men you know some man sitting at some point of some uh, patriarchal institution and uh, dictating terms for a woman to live her life in india is unacceptable it's it's unacceptable so you know there they were rules uh, in the past century there were rules where a husband dies a woman also has to jump into the pyre and die sati was there yeah. and then you had uh, um, you know the widows where the head shaven they couldn't go out of the house and a lot of things now we think you know we are very free in india has become very modern we are, we are in the digital age people are you know they are on social media instagram tiktok but my friend i'm telling you that this modernity modern technology all these development has nothing to do with being progressive ha huh? 
so we we are we're still backwards the right now you that's what i i'm telling you you can't even divorce come out of a domestic violence you know a violent marriage uh, you can't break up your boy break up with your boyfriend you know what happens in tamil nadu when a woman break breaks up with her boyfriend of years he might stab her to death pour acid on her face you know all these things happen so uh, freedom is to choose what is right freedom is to decide freedom is to uh, not to be interdependent on your family uh, or your brother you know a woman is always a daughter granddaughter mother you know sister she is always dependent on a, you know she is made to always be dependent on a, a, a patriarchal figure in the family i think a woman can survive on her own a woman uh, for example like we've been like oppressed for 2000 years women still live the men still fight the problems are more even in the 21st century and but we we still go on right we are stronger in ourselves why do you need someone to tell you dupatta pehen lo yaar ek cover karo kya main kyun cover karu yaar like you wear this you can't leave your hair free you can't wear red lipstick you can't go out of your house at 11 o'clock educated women with multiple degrees have home curfews uh, 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 fathers let uh, you know that their men go out, their uh, sons go out at any time, but women can't go out even after nine o'clock. They're answerable. I'm a feminist. I'm a feminist. I'm 38 years old. I'm still answerable to my family. Where do I go out? I have to report every half an hour. I have to call them. So all these things are like, and also free from violence. That is very important. As a woman, I'm strong. I'm going out. I'm exploring the world. I'm learning. We're all learning. But what happens outside? You know, women are raped, killed. All those things which happens on a regular basis. So free from violence, free from toxic masculinity, and free from patriarchy. So that is more important. That is what is more freedom for me. So representation matters. So proper representation of women in arts, literature, politics. social media matters mm. and shalin how did your uh, relationships changed since the time you started taking these stances uh, very openly in your circles it was drastic because a lot of people uh, started moving away from me. but a lot of people started moving away from me from my divorce itself but uh, after that also i had friends and all but the politics what you speak right like, because i take a clear stand against uh, the politics of this country i am uh, you know i am left so i am uh, i am left oriented i am i'm more left and uh, i speak liberal uh, politics and a lot of people doesn't you know uh, align with that so a lot of colleagues especially uh, when you work then there is a problem in the you know uh, at your job and at family too a lot of people think you are a threat to their daughters the more feminism you talk no wonder people think that you are breaking families <laughs> they are like oh she is a home breaker don't let her inside all their daughters they will hide their daughters away from me no no you should never talk to her you know uh, she might uh, corrupt your brain and she will uh, talk to you into doing something stupid and uh, a lot of a lot of men who i dated they never liked a, a woman who, who would speak feminism that's a whole modern yeah shorts pen no hair pen no this that everything but they would never like a woman talking about herself making decisions about herself a well informed woman most men cis het men do, they don't like it no? so they feel threatened about, about a feminist woman. so being a feminist and dating <laughs> doesn't uh, didn't work so much for me and uh, We all, all, men always fight with you, you know. So we we call out sexism. We call out sexism in cinema. Then you have see there is a lot of sexism. You know Vijay and Ajit movies, right? So Vijay is a very big star here in Tamil Nadu, south down south. Yeah. He's got a big fan following. And then you call out uh, the sexism, rampant sexism in his movies. You call out that, and all his fans will come and attack you. They say that you look ugly. You are, you don't look good. You look fat. You go to hell. We will kill you. You know. all these things happen so you're always under constant threat and then you uh, you criticize bjp you talk about pol- politics you have dmk here you have uh, you know and then we we talk about dmk we, we, we criticize uh, political parties because political parties are very a uh, patriarchal most of the political parties be it left or right they are they are very patriarchal so we question as a woman i question them 
so then they get very and all the party workers will come and blast you they'll troll you so relationships with the inside uh, the families change with friends change everything changes so i i feel very alone at times it's a lonely battle when it it's a very lonely battle you're very alone once you start speaking feminism politics or you, know, you become very uh, uh, it's good, it's good it's like a lonely wolf you know i like it it gives me power so i can't set into any particular group i can't uh, you know align with a particular i can align with a lot of people i cannot be a part of any group but it's good no to be alone to be alone is also power so so uh, although i know the answer but uh, uh, if you have to choose between being a feminist uh, and being alone or being slightly less feminist uh, but being not so alone uh, what would you choose so what like what would i choose but i have always been choosing to be alone and to be a feminist this fight is not just for me this is for my whole community so uh, i uh, i've actually uh, raised voice against a lot of issues here in tamil nadu and india all the social evils against women so a lot of people uh, a lot of women in fact uh, have uh, have confided in me and spoken about you know how they change their lives you know after they uh, you know um, after they embraced feminism and after they became feminist feminist and things like that so feminism can do magic it can actually you know it's it's all about equality not just for women even for fe- men this <laughs> is very much needed so it has created a lot of impact in society so i always would love to be like this feminist be alone than to be you know Uh, just in one hour or two hours to go with friends to have ice cream do you just give away your freedom and you know all your ideas i don't think that it's so i'll tell you one that most of the people out there who are uh, uh, rebels uh, people who are you know it's, it's, it can be anti caste it can be feminism it can be any kind of ideologies yeah. so they are lonely they are alone uh, they are lone warriors but they stick to that you know they just remain that because they don't want to give it up for anything else in this world so i would also be the same mm yeah no absolutely and you know for the record i don't want to box this conversation or you into the just feminism because there is so much more to you uh, shalina and would love to talk so much and i'm just taking this conversation the way it's going and uh, because obviously i mean we just talked about amazing work that you do uh uh but uh i i ha- because you touched upon you know topic of feminism it has always been an interest to me and my listeners as well so just one or two questions before we go and talk about even bigger things uh is uh have you spotted those marriages which are or relationships where the woman maybe is patriarchal but the man is not and maybe the man is more egalitarian in nature and women still believes in the patriarchal norms and uh, how has been your experience seeing those marriages if any uh, internalized patriarchy among women does exist i would not say no uh, women have been master slaves for example uh, master slaves in the sense uh, women have been uh, ca- you know carriers of uh, caste pride religious cultural yeah. norms along with it they also at times they carry patriarchy among themselves uh to be uh to be precise uh women are they are the ones who implement the rules and regulations of you know caste and religion and all the patriarchal uh, things which comes along with it so usually we always blame women you hey, know i don't uh, ask for dowry yaar it's my mother who asks for dowry you know these kind of uh, ex- excuses uh, man gives but uh, to be honest all these rules and regulations uh, when it comes to patriarchy were devised by men uh, women at one point were just made to do all these things it's like you know one person if you uh, you know if you uh, carry out all these culture ka things at home then you will be given a special place in heaven you will be called you know a wonderful woman you know uh, family per- women and things like that. so most women do that also at the same time you have men uh, being egalitarian in a relationship and you're saying but that is the number is very less one that i'll tell you because sitting at home or uh, seeing people around us our friends how many people would be here 
if I've known just 50 people, 50 families, then we'll just see uh, three or four uh, families where they're very close, where people truly, you know, um, show, show, truly expose their original skin. So, 10 families around you, you see women be very dominant in that relationship. Like how they show in movies, women beating up a husband, you know, a uh, husband being very humble, women is making it do a lot of stuff and things like that. From a normal person's point of view, that is how the world is, right? But being activists, but being women, when we go around, we see whatever is happening in a larger scale in this country, the largest scale, institutionalized violence against women is more. So men are very, the, the number of uh, Men who are more patriarchal is very less to women with little bit of, you know, patriarchy in that. Uh, to be very honest, it is like one is to hundred ratio. So like there for hundred men who torture their wives, we had one woman who might be patriarchal in her relationship. This is the whole, that's why we have laws against all these things. India as a country has recognized that women go through more shit. So women go through institutional violence, domestic violence, uh, dowry and child marriages, this, that, a lot of patriarchal, you know, things, norms which is there. That's why women have specified laws. That's why women have specified, you know, uh, um, support from the government itself. So what we see happening in my uncle's house or auntie's house is not the generalized view of India. It is just one, it just happens. But it, but what happens across the country is women being consistently, you know, uh, dominated by men. For example, every 90 seconds, a woman is harassed in India. This is the, you know, statistics. Uh, every, uh, every two minutes, a woman is harassed for dowry at home. This is a statistics. This is the data. Uh, every five minutes, a woman is raped and murdered in this country. This is the statistics. You can't show me a statistics for a man like, you know, um, men being raped or men being killed for dowry or uh, men being, you know, uh, men having uh, acid poured on their face, being teased or molested. You, you, that is very rare. That is only one person maybe. So the whole burden of patriarchy, the whole domination of patriarchy falls on women who go through so much of shit every day. This, whatever happens, that is institutionalized, that is organized dom uh, domination, organized uh, violence on women. And then you have family issues where women being a little bit patriarchal. But when you look into that too, you might find that it is not that patriarchal logic. Who ties the Mangal Sutra? Wife doesn't tie the Mangal Sutra. Husband ties the Mangal Sutra. Husband gives name to the wife, uh, the kid. Whose initial are we having? We are having the father's initial. We don't have a mother's initial. A father makes the major decisions about uh, uh, families. For example, finance of the family, from uh, what uh, the children study to a lot of things are decided by father. A woman does not ask money from a husband to get married. But a man asks for money from a woman to get married. Not just that. A man, you know, when a woman gives birth in India, she has to pay for it. That is the Riddhi Rivaan she has. The culture. I give birth. It's my labor pain. It's so much of pain I give birth to a baby. A man, now the whole culture wants me to reward man for that by giving money to him, by doing a lot of, you know, religious uh, festivities around it. So a woman does not have ownership or the full ownership of the baby she gives birth to. A man has it. So everything is about women. So the whole uh, burden is on them. So when you see this, then you will not even question like why are women patriarchal and why men not? Uh, for example, you ask me, you know, um, uh, why uh, family planning? Why you talk about family planning and stuff? In India, uh, only 13% uh, of men go for family planning. Uh, because uh, more than 80% of uh, men don't opt for family planning. They don't want to wear a condom. <laughs> they don't want to go for contraception. They just want to, you know, impregnate a woman and they want a woman to take care of it. You know, you want to do abortion, it's your burden. You want to take care of the baby, it's your burden. Everything is. So every burden of this patriarchal society falls on women. It's not on a man. 
so whatever you're seeing is a very minimal uh, thing which is happening and whatever uh, institutionalized oppression which is happening on women is on a very larger scale uh, sometimes men give these kind of examples so that they can just you know avoid dialogues of uh, you know oppression of women i think that is that's what happens but when you see the bigger picture i've traveled across india i worked across india i've been to north i've been to east i've been to west south everywhere problems of women keep on being the same it's all it's all the same violence oppression domination uh, so it, it's all the same that's why i start writing about it uh, a lot about body autonomy or uh, a lot of things uh, patriarchal rituals i talk about a lot because men don't are not even aware you know so many things happen to women and jo uh, bivi aur mia mein jo jhagda hota hai they'll come and say no oh, the spice is very patriarchal you can compare this and that you know oppression has a very different shape it's very gross it, it happens on a larger scale then uh, uh, just uh, whatever happens between two people in a relationship is a different topic we can't uh, uh, connect that with gender based oppression in india which is very wrong yeah no great answer there shalin uh, and shalin there is also a school of thought which in feminism which believes that uh, men can never be feminist because they have not experienced uh, that level of oppression do you do you also think that that that's a fact no men can be feminist why can't men be feminist it's about equality right uh, so i uh, uh, men men also suffer from max toxic masculinity i'll tell you when i say when i talk about feminism i say men also need feminism because you know you have this wonderful thing called men can't cry men a man shouldn't cry so um, uh, in india uh, 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 a lot of men go through heart attacks and depression a lot of men commit suicide you know men a lot of men commit suicide a lot of men die early in india why because men could not express those you know uh, which they feel sad they cannot express they cannot cry they cannot they cannot go to their men friends and cry because you know suddenly someone a man will die okay he'll be very close with five people he'll be very he'll be having very five close with five friends they'll be like drinking every day uh, they'll be having a gala time but once he dies he'll go and ask his friends what happened to him why did he die why so suddenly friends will say we don't know we don't know what problem he had he didn't even share it with us so the whole thing of being masculine right toxic masculinity indian india wants is meant to be very brave never cry don't share the sorrows with anyone if you have financial problems also don't share it with your wife mar to aisa nahi karega yaar you have to be really stone hearted so what happens is men generally have mental health issues which men do not express because they're scared of their peers which is another man they're scared another man will judge me yeah uh, so i will become less of a man if i have depression will i be less of a man if i tell that you know i cry i love to cry you know men don't express much because of this because of toxic toxic masculinity and they also think you know the whole family should be run by a man he has to earn you know this is patriarchy right but because of that the burden on the man increases because he can't send his wife to a job if two people work they can share the money they can share the household but no there are houses where only a man has to work yeah because that's what the law says the patriarchal law says so the whole burden falls on the man you know so it is man uh, men always have this insecurity about their sexuality also so you you see men fighting on the road a tea shop you see two men will be fighting like why they'll be like supporting two actors and fighting and they'll be on the road two men fighting just for that the traffic mein aisa hi okay and then they'll go to railway station you see two men fighting everywhere everywhere you see two men always fighting three or four men they are always fighting with each other this is what i call because they need to prove to each other main mard hu you know in my my blood my veins i'm a man i have to prove you know what would women and do such situation she will just two women they will scold each other and just you know go away from that place they will not fight they will never take risk women don't take risk no they will not fight here and there 
they will fight in ration shops for food women will fight at you know uh, hand pumps for water yes you see yeah, women fight yeah. so hard well, they will fight for yeah. resources ha ah, they will fight for resources but what men do they fight unnecessarily cinema theater mein jhagda ya jhagda so what happens is men are aggravated in it. men are aggravated because of toxic masculinity there is so much of peer pressure a girl cheats a man or a girl breaks up with a man love love to ho gaya to love break up ho gaya for him he cry for couple of days and leave it but what happens a man another man will come and say what you are a murder she left you and she le- she went and you are just not doing anything about it you are waste you are zero so he gets very aggravated you know that is the point where men need feminists that is men need to fight patriarchy for their own mental health their own safety their own long lives so men have to be feminist so when you say when i was talking to you earlier i was talking about you know the laws of india the laws of india constitution yeah. treats everyone equally constitutional providence for women who brought us this law it was baba saheb ambedkar who got us the constitution he he uh, he was the one who taught about equality he was a feminist i tell you the maternal maternity benefits for women in india right the maternity leave maternity benefits was brought by ambedkar uh yeah, the ekas work for women for everybody was brought by ambedkar uh and there is a lot of uh, abortion laws uh, and there is a lot of uh, what to say uh, family planning laws and there is a uh, remarriage law and then uh, there is a law for consent also in the hindu code bill of ambedkar he also had a law for consent and then he also he was the one who also got uh, who got in the law for uh, uh, public uh, toilet or separate toilets for women you know for working women for women i can give you 100 of laws that ambedkar has you know uh, given for women in this country because he knows that men cannot give you know any kind of relief to women so they need laws to save that them right so ambedkar is a feminist can i say i don't need your laws today i am really safe and you know i'm kind of i'm safe in this country is because of you can i say no you're not feminist jyotira phule he there was no schools in india so jyotira uh, mahatma jyotira phule was the one who taught his wife savitri bai phule who in turn went ahead and founded the first school for women in india in the in, in the you know the 19th century he was a feminist so i would say you know we i can even call nehru a feminist you know he is he made the country uh, uh, equally uh, livable for women too so there's a lot of things around me a lot of people activists who are men who have made life easy for women by making use of their opportunity for example at those times men had the opportunity men had the privilege to make the laws but they made sure that these laws will treat men and women equally and it will support women so all these great political leaders activists men are feminists so i can't go ahead and say no 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 men can't be feminists. men have to be feminists for themselves for women around them and their families that is i, I will not accept the uh, argument that men can be feminists and most and, men, and right now we talk about spectrum and things like that so you can't point out at someone and say you can't speak a feminism that is oppression you can't do it. that's wrong yeah no, absolutely i think we had a very good 30 minutes and i think we did set some amazing context there shalina especially on feminism i think like i said during our uh, chat before that i can talk about this topic for another one one and a half hours but uh, there's so so much more to talk about since you have such a diverse uh, range of uh, thoughts and experience Uh, i would i think i would specifically would love to touch uh, you know i think you have raised some very very strong points on tamil cinema uh, and i would like to take the conversation there though i have not seen tamil cinema and i'm very sorry about it uh, no <laughs> and uh, <laughs> i have not but you do raise some points that uh, where you know either tamil cinema is promote i'm assuming that your your followers and your you know uh, do do have seen those cinemas so you do raise these points that uh, you know there is caste pride there is toxic masculinity 
and uh, a lot of times they and the most prominent of actors uh, end up giving very very bad signals and virtue signals to the society uh, yes yeah. so do you want to give us some specific examples and raise some of those questions here on the show so sure, i'll tell you why so why i'm so concerned about sir because mostly people who speak feminism does not worry about sir they are very straight yeah. forward you know left feminist will not talk about it cinema in india is religion more than their own religion they worship uh, they give so much importance to cinema people die for actors uh, i would say indian cinema itself cinema has been here for more than 100 years and it just is mixed in the blood of people living here so they worship that you see but why is there but why is it shalin and why is this specifically so prominent hero worship is so prominent in tamil nadu i mean we all i mean we in the north always thought think about it that this is to another level only i mean it is just another level hero worship has been throughout india i mean except for throughout india of course of course yeah but but uh, tamils ta- i'll tell you tamils have taken it to another level of choosing their five chief ministers from film film industry <laughs> okay there was uh, uh one say starting was uh, anna durai he is a script writer dialogue writer from tamil cinema cn anna durai from dmk and then you have uh, mr karnanidhi uh, who was a uh, 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 who was a writer script writer song writer of movies in tamil cinema okay and then you have mgr mgr is like the star cm and the star of tamil uh, cinema he was called the purachi tilagam a revolutionary actor thing like that so uh, he was uh, you know he was there uh, for, as a cm for a very long time and he came from yeah. tamil cinema because he was a prominent hero until today mgr people think mgr has not died okay even i love mgr so much i listen to his songs every day i'm so enthralled by i just see him on screen so mgr yeah. was made cm and then comes jayalalitha i don't know after mgr mgr's wife became uh, chief minister her name was uh, janaki so she was also a co actress of mgr she was a actress to tamil nadu tamil industry and then was jayalalitha jayalalitha was a very big actress in tamil nadu and then she also became a cm and now the current uh, 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 chief minister mr stalin he also has connections to tamil cinema a bit even though it's not mainstream so i think you know as soon as some uh, so they made five people five people from cinema who's associated with cinema as you know uh, chief ministers of tamil nadu even now if one actor you know gives a blockbuster movie ho oh, gaya yeah. so he is the next prime minister of chief minister of tamil <laughs> he is the next chief minister so which i have so many fans because people think that he will venture into politics and one day he'll be seen ajit kumar yeah. he has so many things because people think that he will uh, you know rajini rajini would have been would have, could have been a chief minister if he contested way back itself yeah. you know because we, every time people love his movies because he was very political and people thought okay tomorrow he is my talewa i'm going to make him chief minister kamal hasan he had the whole advantages because he he has a privilege yeah. of being this uh, person he thinks once once he that's what he thinks so as, as soon as he can come into politics he can become a big shot see this is the whole uh, thing so as soon, it is like ntr you have ntr from andhra pradesh no so every, every tamil nadu people they are i think they are the only ones who think they can make the actors and you know chief ministers and prime minister mm-hmm. that person mm-hmm. who has <laughs> so where are we coming at this this is the amount of attraction they have towards the male actors or the actors so what they say on the screen how they act what is the behavior they exhibit on the screen matters right so any indian would learn how to behave with a woman how to propose how to act in a first night room so everything they will learn from sir there are a lot of men in tamil nadu who learned how to smoke a cigarette from watching rajinikanth movies because rajinikanth is known for smoking cigarettes stylishly you know so rajinikanth ka hairstyle rajinikanth ka cigarette 
everything they get they they follow the actors it's a cult so these actors if they are not responsible they are not responsible so their movies filled with to- toxic masculinity starting from mgr rajni khan kamal hasan vijay shivakarti game there's the new guy called shivakarti everybody are into toxic masculinity stalking women calling them names slut shaming them character assassinating them on the screen the heroines it is very rampant it happens and these fans replicate the behavior in actual life they you know the impact of mass media is that mass media impacts human brain in a very very uh, you know complicated manner so what they see they mirror it they replicate so whenever rajnikanth shames a woman on screen they do the same i've 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 done the whole study on this i've done the whole study on this they do the same to women in tamil nadu rajnikanth doesn't like modern women in his movies If any woman is modern in his movies he slut shames them very happy you know so the, the 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 fans also do that so all these kind of you know uh, and uh, what happens vijay goes and proposes to a girl in a movie if the heroine doesn't accept vijay will beat her or slut shame her she will fall in love with him the guy sees this the fan sees this he thinks you know my talewa is doing this my talewa is doing this he also repeats this in real life, in real time you know in real life this is wrong right? this is very wrong so cinema has created revolutions across the world cinema has uh, you know uh, changed the politics of this country cinema has always been a, been a medium of you know uh, high impact uh, when it comes to you know normal people like that i like this so how actors uh, you know propagate themselves in, on the screens is very important that's why as a feminist i have great concerns i have very major concerns for indian actors i would not just say tamil actors indian actors even telugu films the toxic masculinity is horrible and then you have hindi films everywhere so I, i because i've seen a lot of these movies i've i've grown up watching hindi movies telugu movies and so i i'm very much concerned how the you know how the uh, youth will be guided because of these actors and i'm i'm, I'm very uh, sad about it. yeah and what what do you think of uh, you know paranjit and the kind of change he's trying to bring in in that paranjit was a <laughs> total change maker i would say because Ten years back, uh, when I didn't know what to do, because I, I also was like, uh, I was struggling. I was thinking about what should I do next, what should I write, and so he brought this whole uh, anti-caste, anti-patriarchy cinema to Tamil Nadu. That is, he started from this movie called uh, Attakathi. So I think that is uh, that is his first movie, and then then there was a movie called Madras on football and things like that. So. Uh, it is a new way what he brought into uh, the indian cinema i would say not just tamil cinema but indian cinema so the movies which spoke about subaltern marginalized people the movies which spoke about the the, the real uh, face of women you know it spoke about diversity because tamil nadu has always been shown as a vegetarian state people people think we don't eat meat we eat masala dosa sambar right <laughs> we drink good coffee yeah. it's crap we we that is nothing like that only 3% people do that okay and we are predominantly non vegetarian state we eat all kind of live stocks live stocks uh, our cuisine is very vibrant our uh, the language we speak the accent the slang everything is very vibrant uh it is like we don't speak the, the tamil what we like how you show right madrasi speak uh, the hindi you know we don't speak like that i am speaking to you right so we speak differently our culture is different there are so many communities there oppressed community they have their own life they have the celebration they have the lives 100 years of tamil cinema has never shown the lives of dalits it's always about the land owning caste it is always about the dominant caste so when they show about when the movie is about a land owning caste and a, you know a dominant caste the movie is filled with patriarchy the movie is filled with patriarchy 
whatever happens in real life only they show it in the movie also so the movie is filled with patriarchy it is like very much or it's very disturbing they never showed women in a good light they never showed women uh, in a beautiful way they are very rare movies they never showed the lives and celebrations of the working class people you know the, the people from the slums of madras uh, the dalit people the working class but what far and it did is he, he actually brought to tamil cinema uh, the face of tamil nadu which has never been portrayed before in mainstream media so i think that is a very beautiful thing so uh, it is a very rebellious uh, act in tamil movies in in tollywood and uh, i always admire his guts to to bring those into the table because uh, most of the directors compromise a lot in tamil nadu because they might not get another chance but ranjit braved it you know he brought things when it comes to even dialogues everything showing baba saheb's photo in movies because you know in tamil nadu you can't even say baba saheb's name properly they will kill you uh, if you wear a t-shirt with baba saheb's uh, face you might get uh, abused uh, or assaulted and you can't have statues statues of baba saheb here it is always caged because there are miscreants always trying to do something to it so, so why is that because it is very fastest tamil nadu is very fastest they do not like most of them do not like baba saheb because uh, he comes from the dalit community so they don't would they have the him. same feelings of periyar also um okay i'll put it this way this might get very complicated okay i'll put it this way uh a lot of people do not like periyar because periyar spoke against brahmanism okay but even those who like periyar a large chunk of them would not like baba saheb you got the intersection i do i do i i i got it immediately but uh, i'm just trying to decode that what is what could be a possible sociological analysis of the same is it because that they associate periyar more with the tamil nadu and its land uh, and uh, baba saheb more with maybe you know a north india i don't know so maybe that bias or is there something more to it no never like that uh for example uh, a lot of tamilians love gandhi a lot of tamilians are gandhians a lot of tamilians love nehru this has not happened to nehru indra rajiv gandhi or uh, uh north indian leaders like or gandhi but it ha- the discrimination only happens to baba saheb no that is where it is i never i was never taught about baba saheb in my school even my family would never discuss about baba baba saheb so why tamil nadu never discuss baba saheb only now that is the question you have periyar i see periyar as a anti caste leader i see periyar as a rationalist a social reformer who has done a lot of good things to tamil nadu but periyar himself declared his leader as ambedkar baba saheb ambedkar lot many times a lot of times uh, uh, they, they have quoted um, uh, periyar saying that baba saheb ambedkar is my leader okay and a lot of his writings ambedkar's reading and writings from annihilation of caste and everything has been uh, you know uh, translated from english to tamil by periyar they are very close and uh, all the buddhist uh, research whatever ambedkar did right all the conferences periyar also traveled with him learned along i would never blame periyar but periyar did belong to the dominant caste in tamil nadu ambedkar comes from the untouchable tamil so even people who uh, speak anti brahman narrative who have anti brahman narrative who are periyaris they do not accept ambedkar you know that is how it that works. is where that is where it's coming from yeah so they 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 will accept it yeah they will never accept ambedkar because end of the day it's not about tamil or region or anything it's about caste they will accept gandhi <laughs> they'll accept everybody but only ambedkar so that is where you have to be very introspective so why and the amount of humiliation even a statue of baba saheb undergoes in tamil nadu is horrible 
right now we are speaking about it imagine before 10 years nobody will even speak about this but you asked me about ranjit right ranjit and uh, the cinema the impact he has made so bringing in ambedkar into his movies has really disturbed the mainstream media or cinema uh, in tamil nadu so right now a lot of people are using ambedkar's pictures in their movies after you know ranjit's uh, venturing into cinema the narratives of tamil cinema has changed so we have to look at that and this and it's very uh, horrible it's like i was talking about all those feminism and anti caste laws and we are being equal and everything imagine being in tamil nadu and you have people who even abuse baba sahib in front of how would you feel it's, it's very unfortunate yeah Uh, and 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 do you see the impact of uh, ranjit's movie around you in your circles uh, how in in a positive manner hi yaar so i became very anti caste i became an anti caste liberal <laughs> after watching his movies so his movie has impacted me i never told i never uh, uh, you know i never spoke which community i come from you know i always hid my community so there was right now on mainstream media to you um, on national uh, media I'm, i'm calling myself a dalit before 10 years i would have never done that uh, so he has made a big impact so uh, because of his movies i opened myself as a dalit that is for sure because of his movies uh, we started uh, you know uh, gaining that awakening uh, you know anti caste awakening in tamil nadu in the recent times there have been anti caste awakenings happening from a very long time in uh, in, in tamil nadu uh, 90s because of vck there was a political party you know primavalvan is there so 90s there was anti caste awakening and everything but after uh, 2010 the whole anti caste awakening happened uh, and i contribute it to uh, uh, a lot to ranj so a lot a lot of people like me who are even ashamed to call themselves dalits you know because of the discrimination we face we were scared we were scared that what if we call ourselves and we, we, we people will you know treat us really bad even after that so there was a time he made us realize that you can be assertive so use the word dalit and be assertive so that is one thing we learn from the movies and he's he, he's contributing a lot towards the uh, you know the politics dalit politics or one in a very not just in a man a very different ways uh, culturally too i am a dalit writer right i am a writer i published two books in tamil uh, there was a point in time that uh, mainstream uh, writers will, will not accept me as a writer because i am a dalit so the whole thing has been broken now because of that so everybody is this it now it's become an all inclusive space literature art cinema so that's what it is it's become an all inclusive place in tamil it's it's a huge wave of rebellion i think it's a huge wave of rebellion. Mm. no absolutely i think and uh, can totally imagine your journey and the empowerment you would have felt after his movies and generally the freedom of you get yeah the freedom you yeah. get when you show your actual identity outside you know that 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 is incomparable ah yeah. uh, that and we talked about what is being free and you know obviously this is to be yourself, this could be written. yeah do not to pretend to be somebody to else not that to, is not somebody else to say ambedkar's name look you need to say ambedkar's name we'll feel scared before 15 to 20 years to say his name but right now we are talking anti caste politics we are talking strong politics we are saying baba sahib's name we are talking about baba sahib's writing and everything which is i think it's a huge uh, thing it's very big change in tamil nadu i would say it's very big change and it feels good yeah and moving from tamil movies to uh, and tamil cinema to tamil politics i think uh, we i'm sure you can spend another hour talking about it uh, but also again uh, we have we have very very little knowledge at least here in north india of tamil politics in fact uh, you know it's i mean we the, the 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 only thing if i would understand is that that dmk is relatively more towards social justice uh, at least from what it appears and stalin and talking about quoting ambedkar and uh, having those kind of schemes uh, but we generally i think uh, 
we don't know a lot about it and i think it's us to blame of course we never went ahead and did our own research uh but yes uh would like to understand that how has been the political climate always uh in tamil nadu i mean we do understand you know there are two parties the idmk and uh, you know dmk etc i mean but what what's more than what's more nuance to tamil nadu and if some if i have to ask you this that if somebody wants to understand tamil nadu politics at the very initial or very you know at in a very basic manner what would you tell them uh, i love tamil nadu politics it's a very interesting scene from history from whatever happened at all is very interesting uh it's full of masala and it's very spicy yeah. it's hot like our <laughs> you know weather climate so uh my mother you know, everybody is politicized there would, there would be everybody is it everybody is politicized there would be a single family who doesn't talk about politics on a daily basis everybody will talk politics from morning till night there was a really? time yeah when i was a kid my mother would put me in her you know lap she would be instead of telling stories you know she would be talking about politics to other people and i i grew up listening to the stories i grew up listening about uh, you know karna uh, nidhi or jayalalita you know this is how the life has been for me it's always dravidian politics dravidian politics see tamil nadu's politics is self respect self respect that is the word it is anti brahmanism right it is anti uh, all parties yeah i'll tell you uh, the whole dravidian concept is anti brahmanism yeah yeah rationalism rationalism there is someone called ayodhya das pandivar so pandit ayodhya das is the stalwart a dalit stalwart who lived in the uh, 19th century who coined the word dravida that means uh, dravidam uh, which is to- the whole ideology is we are against uh, sanatan or we are against uh, uh, brahmanism that is the whole concept we are rationalist this is the part so whole politics have been you know fighting with uh, you know the upper caste people the oppression the caste oppression uh, i'll tell you even the starting of the 20th century the starting of 20th century Tamil Nadu's political ideology was remarriage for women, remarriage for widows, uh, uh, rights to properties, rights to property for women, voting rights for women, uh, and uh, this 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 is a the whole politics of Tamil Nadu was based upon anti-caste sentiment. It was about you know equal rights for everybody, socialism. you know everybody should be uh, you know uh, get equal resources it was like this and it was very aggressive thing. it was very aggressive because they mm. even at one point the politicians from tamil nadu they allied with the uh, you know the english east india company they allied with the officers of the east india company they uh, got rights for them they got uh, you know equal rights within the madras presidency so it is very very uh, what is it self respect was the goal for them before even before everything self respect was there so the whole politics is women were uh, a big a big part of it everybody were a big part of it and you know it um, it was like a really uh, vibrant place for politics of dignity politics for dignity but what happened so congress was there and then there was this uh, justice party was there and then you had dmk which came in 1960 so dmk was the uh, after uh, dmk was the first uh, proper political popular political party in tamil nadu which was established in 1960 so uh, <laughs> dmk uh, did a lot of good things i would not blame dmk you know they brought in a lot of reforms within tamil nadu so they uh, got an education for all free education they got a lot of stuff the schemes the welfare schemes everything was good at one point but what happened was at after one point no once they started becoming a popular uh, you know political party things started happening so uh, shifting away from the goals ideologies of rationalism happened 
and then there was a split in dmk there was a split in dmk and there was another fo- a party formed out of it which is called admk mgs party jalanta party right so admk came from dmk so they got split and then it has always been either a jdmk or dmk so starting from the 19 late 1960 uh, late uh, 19 uh, Uh, 70s 80s it's always been yep. either dmk or adm either dmk or adm there has never been a third party rule or a third party majority adm or dmk fight between karnanidhi or mj fight between karnanidhi or jayalalitha now it's challenge or eps ops so um, at one point the, the ideology is got diluted and uh, uh, the family members started becoming you know uh, the heads of the parties so we have uh, rampant uh, nepotism in dmk so karnanidhi's son uh, became the cm so after him his son udayanidhi will become a cm so it goes like that you know it's unwritten rule so uh, just like maybe uh, bihar or, you know uh, yeah uh, like rjd or like new up mulayan singh yadav you know they have the same kind of structure there. and he also know you know they were they were all friends so lalu and bmk and uh, mulayan singh yadav they are all they are all connected but it is also they are connected in one front against uh, you know uh, the rightist uh, politics the right politics also. but yeah again so bmk right now is shifting from its ideology of rationalism and stuff. what what was the one point which i would say for black mark is the vote bank politics so there is this politics in tamil nadu which is depends on caste votes not just in tamil nadu the whole of india caste votes you know it it plays a major share so the intermediate caste so they have this uh, whole caste groups here in tamil nadu so dmk and admk both have in Uh, playing favors to these caste groups, and the whole politics has been the caste politics of them. Yeah, this yeah. is very tiring. And we do have welfare measures. We do have uh, good things here and there. I would not say so we have a LGBTQ uh, commission which has been set set up in Tamil Nadu. Uh, it's going to be set up, uh, and the transgenders they got uh, the first, um, you know. identity year you know what is it they got the first uh, planning commission or board here so there's a lot of good things which happens in tamil nadu but at the same time there's so much of honor killing people can't get married in their own will yeah and there's so much casteism you get killed every day dalits are you know killed every day women are not safe here because of the old bank politics even right now i wrote about uh, the child marriages are being very rampant here so again you know child marriages cast cast bank vote bank so i think all the parties here like admk dmk major parties are they used to be rationalistic they are not rationalistic anymore and uh, they are anti bjp but sometimes they do adapt certain uh, aspects of bjp too and uh, there is uh, not much free speech here um, and um, you can't as a woman you can't go and criticize these both parties Uh, you will be shamed and you know, things like that. So uh, it's been quite hard. So only one thing I can say about it: we don't have BJP here. That is one uh, big uh, relief for us. But there is caste and caste-based politics, which is and very patriarchal politics. After Jalita, we didn't have any women leaders here. Nobody has a very important role. There will not be a woman CM for so many years. That is hundred percent sure. only male party leaders so most party leaders are males their sons are party heads and it's very patriarchal for a for a state which spoke about women in equality in the 19th century yeah. right now there are prominently there's no women in the parties so there's no representation of women so they are all at one point uh, have become very regressive so they're not progressive right now they're become very regressive mm. ha ah. one thing about uh, one thing about tamil nadu politics is they they are very pompous they like the politicians like praises they always have uh, poetry around them they always have uh, you know a set of uh, women or men 
sitting around them praising them garlanding them and uh, showering praises on them through poetry and writing and you know that happens all the time so they live like uh, ch- the chola kings you know so <laughs> that happens that is happy for a very long time yeah would you say that tamil nadu politics is ideological in nature i mean would you or do you think that uh, it is now have become non ideological uh, and both the parties are more or less the same and we don't have a strong ide- no ideals and no principles in place from 19 from the late 1980s it has never been ideological it's all been who's going to be in power power hungry anything for being in power so that is the only thing so you, you there's the only ideology is anti bjp even at one point in time dmk was in uh, allyship uh, in coalition with bjp so in yeah. the center yeah so i wouldn't even uh, call that a big thing so there is no ideology and uh, it's all about who's going to be in power admk or dmk and they are more or less the same they are more or less the same yeah. there is a possibility that dmk may go into bjp coalition later also 2024 also there is a possibility because there was a precedence and it can happen again too. so ideologically they are both the same if you going to ask me yeah and also what i don't know i mean do they have the right reasons to oppose bjp i mean apart from the fact that uh, they represent mainland hindi mainland and uh, uh i mean is there what is the strong sense why are they anti bjp and second of all uh, i do believe that bjp is getting popular in tamil nadu maybe not as much but i do sense some popularity of at least mr modi or etc modi is not that popular in tamil nadu in the first place in fact okay. there is a lot of uh, resistance against him uh the whole ma- modi magic doesn't work in tamil nadu uh, why is that okay so, lot many lot, lot many things to unpack here now <laughs> yeah maybe except for few upper caste people or nobody likes uh, mr modi uh, because uh, starting from the beginning starting from 2002 from the godra riots people never liked him he never voted for bjp so even the one B, uh, ticket uh, uh, bjp got in earlier times was given by dnp when they were in coalition other than that we never voted for bjp uh, we always feel bjp is anti people bjp is anti constitution bjp is anti democracy and bjp is anti uh, what is it bjp is anti happiness and things. so yeah so we they do not have that much of uh, uh, attraction or the charm for what mr modi has i would say mr modi even have uh, fans in uh, america right but in tamil nadu you might not find that much of uh, thing for him a, a fan fan for him but bjp has started working on the grassroots levels right bjp in the last 3 uh, 4 years have been doing a very very uh, systematic entry into grassroots levels organized politics it has been doing and that's the reason there has been a slight uh move towards uh, grassroots workers to uh, to bjp it's not because of mr modi but because of the work which is happening here in the party level cadre level but why uh, tamil nadu does not like bjp is because as i said tamil nadu is always anti caste and anti religion and uh, uh, the forefathers of tamil nadu have uh, mr periyar or uh, ayodhi das have always been uh, you know anti caste and anti religion and uh, uh, I, I, and we take pride in the plurality of tamil nadu uh, different people different yeah. people, different you know, language things like that. we have telugu people we have some kannadigas we have malayalis we have tamilians we have a lot of people this one india one uh, single identity of bjp you know the politics of bjp does not you know agree with us we even had rifts with congress the whole anti hindi agitation happened when congress was in power because yeah. congress was trying to be something you know different they tried to impose hindi even that time itself we were against it so it is more ideological so even if today uh, congress bring something like that we'll fight congress 
right now bjp is imposing hindi we are fighting bjp and they are also it's not just because of that price rise gas price rise food price rise gst issues you have uh, you know uh, uh, inflation uh, the finance minister i don't know she is not effective enough and there is a lot of you know issues the secu- there are security issues uh, uh, bjp is very negligent with the, the chinese intrusion the border and uh, there's so much of safety issues happening in the north because of bjp and bjp wants the country to you know uh, always be in, you know what to say this bjp wants riots across the country for it for it to survive bjp survives or um, thrives on riots so people of tamil nadu and the politicians we, we kind of don't like it we we want to have a very democratic life or a democratic life. and uh, just because people don't like bjp that is the main reason the party is trying to alienate themselves from bjp because the people don't like it if tomorrow dmk uh, says that they're going to be in uh, you know coalition with bjp they they will face very bad uh, you know reta- uh, thing out uh, they they face very bad rejection from the people so it's always it's not the parties to uh, you know we for a what to say for a very amateur eye it might look like parties are running you know the state the politics but it's the people who are running the state it's the people who are running the politics it's the people who decide who will be the cm it's the people who will decide to which party will come to they will either go for admk or dmk they will never vote for bjp bjp has always failed in the state but they are doing some work harder wise i don't know how it's going to go uh, anything can be possible in the future uh, but uh, i want to make only one that thing clear we do not like the politics of bjp one india or this whole sanatan thing doesn't work this is a free country Uh, the constitution says we are all free so liberty equality fraternity that is the soul of this country so uh, bjp doesn't align from the time the constitution was amalgamated and promulgated in the constitution bjp has been opposing it from the time from 1949 november bjp has been fighting hard to change the constitution so never yeah. be you know you have summed up well Uh, and uh, how uh, how are the hindu muslim fault lines in tamil nadu and uh, because and just uh, See, asking this because yeah. are the, people are discriminated i will not say no doesn't it says this is a heaven for minorities i am a i am a minority right i am a uh, i belong to a minority religion so minorities here they face a lot of discrimination uh they don't get houses for rent we have an issue here and stuff like that you know like castes you also have this but we do not have communal tensions yeah that's what i we was going to say we have a difference but we do not have communal difference communal tension um, rights and tensions and you know, burning of houses etc yeah, yeah we never do that we, we, we will not hurt a muslim because this uh, you know a uh, hindu will not hurt a muslim because this god is different they eat from the same plate they you know they go to their house they come to their house they will not say you have to speak my language you have you are not supposed to eat meat or you are not supposed to eat cow no i i i might i uh, uh, there, there might be a hindu person in tamil nadu who is vegetarian this friend is a friend who might be a person who eats beef and they will not give a thing about it they are, they are they will be friends they will not judge them they will not kill them they will not lynch them you know that's how it has been you know there is this uh, pilgrimage site called velangani in tamil nadu it's a very big christian pilgrimage site every day there are lakhs and lakhs of people who go there 90% of them are hindus 90% of the people who go to a christian church is a hindu that's how tamil nadu operates we not just tamil nadu bandit why why i am talking like this a whole india has been like that. we have been discriminated people have been little bit discriminated towards people but they had this love for a fellow human being you know they never killed someone for their what they eat or what they wear or what they what is their name have you ever ever heard of a time when you know people kill someone for having a name as ismail or sayed no it didn't happen everybody were living together you know th- th- there was harmony there i would not say there was no there was harmony tamil nadu only point is that bjp is able to get 
to the minds of people in you know in certain part of the country and tamil nadu it is starting to get into the minds it's starting to i'm telling you even here it's playing very dirty politics they're trying to create communal rift tamil nadu does not have that communal disharmony or we don't hate people from other religion so i think that we should give the uh, we should give that to the rational politics of this state that is for sure the state has always been very secular so that we have to give it to them but bjp is again doing its nasty work in tamil nadu it's it's, it's creating a rift between hindus and muslims it's bringing in you know uh, unnecessary issues so that people may fight but we are resisting it we are resisting it we are giving our life we are giving us sweat and blood and resisting it so that tamil nadu will not become a playground for bjp i don't know yeah yes and and shalin uh, having a very strong history of uh, anti caste movements back to back and having leaders who have firmly believed in social justice all these years uh would you say that uh, you have sort of if not defeated but at least put brahmanism to its feet or there still miles to go we have miles to go on that uh we at one point of time uh, we have taken control of the state one thing is we have taken control of the state uh, uh governance that is very important and that is the only reason we were able to uh, work on the reservation part and lot of welfare development schemes and stuff like that so that is one where we actually kind of you know we uh, we held the horses so we we achieved there Uh, the politics taking the politics uh, anti brahman politics so that is yeah. major but what happened afterwards is there are there are education institutions for example iit madras yeah, yeah. so much of caste is there in iit madras you know by the apatas and people come to say and die people resign their job and go lower the people coming from the press class you know all these things happen. that is something we have to fight There's a, it's a very big fight is there, and then yeah. you have worship places which are totally taken over by them, and uh, people are humiliated inside worship places. That is there, and uh, uh, bureaucracy. You have a lot of uh, Brahmins in the bureaucracy, and uh, you know what bu- bureaucracy can do? Power, right? The amount of power they have. So that is that is one place where we have really have to work hard. and uh, yeah the cultural part of it is the whole uh, you, you you if you say media most of the prominent media houses are owned by them are, are run by them so uh, there's there's the whole uh, newsrooms only they own they run so a lot of fight is there but i would say the, the governance and governance and social welfare has been taken care taken away from them so and we and we are all, see at the same time they are also having a good time in tamil nadu like they are having a decent life we have taken the caste authority from their hands in, in, in certain things but they are also treated as equals along with all the uh, other people but still dalits have a very uh, bad uh, Even, Long even way to go. Dalits are treated well here, but Dalits are. You, know, you say your anti-caste state, there is anti-caste politics. You give respect even to Brahmins, but you treat uh, Dalits in a very bad way. So that is that still goes on. Hmm. I was reading. I don't know where I was reading this article. I completely forgot. But uh, I think the article basically talked about uh, Brahmins facing persecution in Tamil Nadu. I wanted to ask you: Is is this also true, or was this another propaganda? <laughs> the only people facing persecution in Tamil Nadu are Dalits, women, and minorities. Yeah. But Bra- Brahmins, I'm telling you, <laughs> we are having a very good life in Tamil Nadu. That's what I say. News agencies owned by them. Yeah. Print media owned by them. TV media. um very big newspapers owned by them bureaucracy they are they are everywhere in bureaucracy they they own lands they own a lot of wealth i don't know where they getting possible <laughs> if they go to us they say this is like visa or something but doesn't happen 
reverse casteism doesn't happen reverse doesn't happen is a myth it's so stupid to say that so brahmins don't get persecuted over here don't, uh, so they might oppress other caste people but tamilians have always accommodated them irrespect of the fact that they, we have been oppressed by them we still have they still have so much of you know uh, they look up to them like you know they are gods so no prosecution nothing like that see do they assert their day, identity they do assert their who the brahmins they do a lot there's a lot of discrimination you would not even know how much of discrimination we go through on a regular basis here Uh, uh for example uh, there are areas where other caste people are not given houses yeah uh, and uh, there are gated communities only for brahmins and there are like uh, uh, certain offices uh, they where their uh, offices or it companies owned by them where they discriminate other caste people there are lot of things which happen and uh, the brahmin priest uh, humiliating uh, you know a scheduled caste women uh, that that even he recently in the sidambaram temple uh, they assaulted a scheduled caste woman they couldn't even book a case against them they couldn't even arrest them this is the top this is the hegemony this is the authority they have so if someone says we are getting oppressed it is very you know it's the most uh, stupidest thing they can say because they are the one who is still oppressing government is also appeasing them government is appeasing them because they are in the power center they still that's why caste is a very Uh, a matter of serious matter of concern in this country because a very mi- uh, small number uh, a minority number of people a small number of people they control a large part of western large part of it power that is that is what is concerning no how can we even say they getting persecuted who wrote that article i will i will share this with you i will and i will not link it with the show notes <laughs> no even this uh, kamala right so i think kamala harris uh, the vp of uh, america so yeah, she always yeah. uh, talks about how oppressed uh, they were in india what a prison bekar ko kuch bhi bol jate hai yaar seriously yeah chalin i think we have covered a very very wide landscape today i think it was a great conversation yeah, just last yeah. last question i think uh, we took some questions from twitter i think one person i just got one question from sangeeta and uh, she wants to know your views on measures to bring out oppressed from the current situation oppressed if it's uh, caste or gender because oppression happens uh, with gender and caste but i will say uh, i will take it as uh, the caste oppress itself in the first place so yeah education is very important so higher ed- dalits in higher education is very important but what happens like Ro- rohit vamela most of them go through oppression in iit madras iim here their universities they hang themselves and die uh, you, you see lot of you know academic suicides which happen uh, nobody gives a thing about them nobody talks about it only dalits keep on shouting so this is there is something caste discrimination in, in academia has to go so and uh, dalits going for higher education uh, you know it should be a very big uh, thing and then uh, depending on uh, political parties to eradicate caste is sometimes it feels very uh, you know uh, like, like for example i would not uh, i always urge dmk or admk to you know abolish the caste system or keep caste in check but they usually don't do so uh, we, we we should have a separate you know party a third uh, party you know uh, a, a movement against casteism so that is more important so these people give importance to vote bank politics caste politics so they they will never change the system they will never touch the caste system they just keep it as it as it you know they try for it so uh, there should be a third uh, intervention like you know uh, we have asad uh, Ch- chandrashekar asad in up right and uh, you know we need such kind of movements uh, in tamil nadu or throughout in, uh, all over the country so that is very important and uh, people should start reading ambedkar more i i i am thinking like if i knew ambedkar when i was 18 years old my life would have been very much different and i would have changed the life lives of thousand people by this time 
but i came to know about ambedkar at a very late i mean i only came to read about him or i totally became aware of him just 5 years back or 7 years back so knowing ambedkar is very important for us to free ourselves for any oppressed class uh, it's going to be the working class it's going to be women it's going to be religious minorities or ethnic mi- or uh, you know uh, caste oppressed they all need to uh, you know uh, they need to uh, read ambedkar they need to follow the path of ambedkar to redeem themselves otherwise nothing is going to happen what you have to do ambedkar has written it like a guide book or uh, he's written about wealth he's written about uh, you know uh, 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 jobs he's written about how to annihilate caste everything we just need to follow on that but we are very adamant that we will not leave our old ways ambedkar talks about conversion no ambedkar talks about the breaking the rituals coming out of it uh, but we don't talk about it right we, we still follow the rituals uh, we still follow brahmanism if we read ambedkar we will never you know follow rituals a lot of things are there so i think uh, I'm um, being an ambedkarite is the only way to you know uh, be free uh, as a woman or a, a caste oppressed or whatever it is. Great note uh, Shalin and uh, thank you so so much for coming on Lights Camera Azadi and spending your Monday evening with us. I think it was a fantastic conversation we learned so much from you of uh, your culture uh, your people and uh, hope to visit you someday in Tamil Nadu. Thanks, Sandeep. I, mean, I spoke a lot today, and I spoke a lot of truth. I don't know; it's because of you. You brought it out for me. I uh, kind of went all candid with my opinions about politics and actors and all. Hope I, <laughs> I will get a lot of you know uh, reaction for it. But you know, it's just a part and parcel of life. I, it's okay. Uh, bring it on. Let me see what comes. Let's see what uh, we, what a, we have in store. Yeah, let's see what life's got in store for us. And. Uh, it was a pleasure because uh, you i really enjoyed talking to you and uh, the questions were perfect i think you covered most of the areas so it was perfect and i had a good time speaking to you i, I oh i didn't even imagine we spent around uh, one and a half hours talking about it i think so so uh, it's a real pleasure and so hope to meet you soon and uh, come to tamil nadu life is very interesting here Yeah, so there's a chess Olympiad happening, and I'm I'm also a little bit into chess, so I'm I'm planning to come to Chennai. Ah, ah, okay, okay, please do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks, Charlie.